Now, David Henshaw of Dispatches, welcome to The Real Deal. Earlier I mentioned my concerns that your undercover style uh, uh, in this undercover mosque program was in danger of being seen by Muslims, already a beleaguered community, as being just another piece of the open season against them as a whole. What would you say to that? Well, I understand that concern. I think it's a very proper concern. And that was one of the reasons that we made sure that in the body of the program we had a large number of moderate Muslim voices. And I think, by and large, the thesis of the program wasn't my thesis. It was the thesis of moderate Muslims who, by and large, are outraged at what they see as the hijacking of their religion by what they see as a very narrow, puritanical and really quite reactionary strand known as Wahhabism. Well, there's no doubt uh, that it's uh, a very hard-line brand uh, of Islam that was on view there. Um, but the, couldn't the same discussion have been had without the cloak and dagger? In this case, literally the cloak and dagger, the camera presumably underneath the burqa or carried in the basket, the kind of fast-moving, um, almost cinema verite approach. It kind of adds a sinister edge to the debate, don't you think? Well, I think the whole purpose of current affairs journalism, as you know, is to gather evidence. And when you're gathering evidence on something as controversial as this, you really need to have incontrovertible evidence. And the best way of gathering that evidence is on camera. Yes, but couldn't you have invited the spokespeople for this brand of Islam to talk in a studio about their beliefs? I mean, some of the beliefs that were uh, on show in the programme about the impermissibility of men and women working in certain environments together. This is quite commonly shared across much of Islam. Uh, not here in Press TV, where there are men and women working in all uh, departments. But uh, that sort of issue could have been had as a debate. But my point is, when, once you put a cloak and dagger in a, and a soundtrack over it, it begins to look like not just a difference of approach to the issue of men and women or the issues between straight and gay people, but almost a kind of violent confrontation. That's the feeling I took from it. Well, I think the violence was in the language of what was being said. I mean, if, Have you read the Old Testament if, recently? If, uh, there's quite a bit of violence in that. There's quite a bit of violence in the Old Testament, and I'd be just as willing to go and film undercover in a church or a synagogue. Well, would you, if, David? If, I if wonder a, about well, that. If I can just reply. Um, if, if I had any evidence at all that a rabbi or a Christian vicar was arguing for the killing of homosexuals simply because they're homosexuals or the stoning of adulterers, uh, we'd get our cameras in as quickly as possible. These are very, very violent pronouncements and it was very important to get the hard evidence that they were being repeatedly put forward uh, on camera. Uh, having got them on camera, um, having put the film uh, together, we then approached everyone we'd filmed and said, all right, let's hear your response, let's hear your side of the argument. Some of them responded, some of them didn't. Those who did respond, we included their responses in the programme. Yes, but I mean, the mere reading of the Old Testament would be to make a pronouncement uh, about the impermissibility of of uh, homosexuality, for example. When did you last hear a vicar calling for the stoning well, of adulterers? Well, well... When did I you last hear a vicar calling well, for homosexuals to be killed because well, they're homosexuals? Anyone who read out the Old Testament... When have you heard a no, vicar calling for it? The Old Testament says it, that's the point. When have you heard a vicar well, calling for it? You've said that five times. But you haven't let answered me, me yet. Well, let me develop... This is turning to Howard versus well, Paxman. Uh, let me, yes, you haven't answered me, other, George. Well, 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 let me develop my answer. These were women These... calling for killing of homosexuals. No, well, were they calling for killing or were, yes. they, were they referring to a text? Did you read the script? A remarkably similar text. <laughs> I watched the programme twice. OK. A well, remarkably listen. similar... Listen to me. A remarkably similar text to that that you would find in the Old Testament. Um, the same attitude to gay people exists in the well, Old George, Testament George, as me, exists in the text the best thing that is these to, women were referring to. The best thing is to look at the to. program and read the script. Yeah. We have Uma Mira, a preacher in the women's circle at Regent's Park Well, you Mosque. tell us she's a preacher. She says, she was, she says the she one was who, speaking, that's true. The one who you tell changes, us she's a preacher. The one who changes his religion, what are we going to do? We kill him, kill. That's what that's, the text says. That's clearly a deeply repugnant re approach 
to the issue of gay people. The point oh, you don't I'm think we should have filmed it? The point I'm making you don't think we is that you it? only filmed it because it was Muslims. You're not out looking for the rabbi who calls for the cleansing of the Palestinians. Palestinians from the land of Palestine. You don't care about that. You're more interested in getting a cloak and dagger and a camera up the jumper of a woman in the Regent's Park Mosque. And you've confirmed it with your attitude in this, in this interview today. It's Islam that you've got a problem with. It's Muslims that you've got a problem with. You don't hunt the Christian bigots in the same way. You don't hunt the Zionist Jewish bigots in the same way. You've got a particular angst against Muslims. That's twice now the same methodology, the same slot dispatches on the same station, Channel 4, and you chose the first day of Ramadan to insult Britain's Muslims and incite other people against British Muslims. That's my case to you. It's British Muslims who were insulted by the Wahhabis you saw in the film. And can I ask you for the sixth time, when did you last hear a vicar calling for the stoning of homosexuals? I don't myself go around listening for either vicars or rabbis. Well, here's, a, here's a challenge, What George. I do know... Here's a challenge, what I do know is You find religions... me a rabbi or a vicar who's calling for the mm. killing of homosexuals yeah. because they're homosexuals or the killing of apostates yeah. because they've left Christianity. Well, you don't and know. And we'll go and film them. But, but, but why don't There's you go... There's the challenge. Why don't you... There's infiltrate... the challenge. Well, don't shout at me. Why There's don't... the challenge, well, George. Please you find stop someone. shouting at me and answer this. You don't go out looking. Well, if you stop talking, you I might be able to answer you. You don't go out looking for the others. You do go looking for the Muslims. That's my point. Did you watch the and dispatches I think on Born Again conduct, Christians? Your conduct, Did you watch the dispatches on Born Again Christians two conduct, months ago? Your conduct. Did you? Your conduct. Did you? In this interview, Did you? it speaks volumes about the aggression... George, you don't answer about my questions. The I'm asking the questions. But you don't answer you mine. You're doing the answering. You don't you, answer mine. Look, you're the interviewee. Maybe after all your lifetime in television, you haven't learned you something. You talk a great deal, but you I don't answer my questions. I am interviewing you. You're the one who has to answer my questions. Now, this is my point to you. You have a problem with Muslims. Channel 4 does, Dispatches does, so-called investigative journalists do. You don't go out infiltrating Jewish organizations. Tell me the ones to infiltrate. Or, well, why do you need me to tell you? You know that George, the Old Testament let me has the you, same attitude George, to homosexuals <laughs> Let me ask you for the eighth these time. Texts. Tell no. me, last time you heard a Christian vicar arguing for the stoning of homosexuals All right, I'll or tell apostates. You. I'll tell you. At the Republican Party convention, it's wall to wall. Christian fundamentalists who hate gays, who hate independent women, who hate Muslims, who are not that keen on blacks and other ethnic minorities, who don't give a damn about the Palestinians living under Zionist occupation in Palestine, who don't care about the million dead in Iraq. But you're not interested in any of that. You're only interested in a camera up the jumper to try and trap somebody you tell us is a preacher in the Regent's Park Mosque. None of us knows who this Um Salim is. We don't know whether she's a preacher, and I've got news for you. There isn't any such thing as a preacher in Islam. People can stand up and speak in a mosque, and it doesn't mean that what they're saying is either official or representative or necessarily shared by the people she's even talking to. But these nuances were deliberately beyond you, because you set out, I stress, on the first day of Ramadan, to cast aspersions on British Muslims and to incite non-Muslims in Britain against the Muslims in our country. And that's your modus operandi. And your whole performance uh, in this interview, if I can glorify it by describing it as an interview, has been ample evidence of that. Do you know something, George? I think you've just beaten the Jim Nocti all-comers record for the longest statement as opposed to question in any interview ever. Let me ask you for the ninth time. When did you last hear a Christian vicar calling for the stoning of homosexuals? Well, uh, uh, Jerry Falwell and, uh, and the other, Pat Robertson, and the others on the Christian right in the U.S. Republican Party who are in charge of the U.S. Republican Party and therefore might be in control of the White House in a few months regularly talk in this hate-filled way about gay people and other people. But I repeat myself, you don't give a damn about them because your animus is against Muslims. So, George, and this, let me ask in you a question. Case, no, what in did, this case... What did you think of them? Actually, we've run out of time to listen to your questions. <laughs> in this case, you're even <laughs> kicking Muslim women. 
I don't think much of men that beat up on women and don't give them a proper opportunity to reply, George. which is why I don't think much of you, which is why I'm pretty glad it's time for the end of this discussion. George, you're a very fair man. Thank yeah, you. You're a very yeah, fair yeah. man. Well, the sincerity and the integrity of the dispatches program man. can be measured and you're by, the the performance, of by the performance of you're this bubble. individual of who's here. This individual, a representative of British television, quite extraordinary. I'll be back shortly to look man, at George. the worst terrorist atrocity man. to hit Britain. This hooligan will have to be thrown out of this studio <laughs> if he doesn't stop <laughs> shouting at me from, uh, the from the is, wings. I'm laughing at you, George. I'm laughing well, we'll at see you. what the viewers think when they...